the morning markets kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the morning market kickoff, but it's happening at 2 p.m. It's like a kind of like a breakfast all day kind of thing here at TFNN. Also, going forward this time, uh, obviously, Tommy still has, is still doing the 9 a.m. slot, morning market kickoff, all of that. Um, but I'm thinking of doing a show, too, at 2 p.m. Uh, not entirely sure on that yet, but if you guys want to hear anything in particular, you know, you got my email, jacob at tfnn.com. You can call our numbers. Just uh, leave a message and tell me if some things you'd like to hear if that uh, materializes in any way. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now in the market. We have the ES Mini off about 0.37% today. So we look at this on the daily. So we started off at the open and then really on some significant volume, at least on the daily, uh, to the downside here. Um, CPI is coming out tomorrow, and it seems like some people are a little bit nervous about it. We'll talk some more about that going forward. Um, and then there, there is a legitimate conversation going on right now of what if the Fed doesn't see the numbers that they need to see uh, to lower rates. You know, what happens then? Uh, you know, it remains to be seen what it looks like. It, I mean, rate hikes are definitely off the table even for May. Uh, I think people were eyeing a June um, rate decrease, but uh, remains to be seen. And we're waiting for the CPI report. That's on Wednesday. We have Russell off, uh, it's mainly sideways, off about 0.05%. Uh, the NQ's off 0.21%. Uh, the gold contract up nearly half a percent right now, trading at 2,364. I'll talk a little bit about that. Costco uh, apparently is selling something like $200 million worth of gold um, monthly. And that's for Wells Fargo estimate. We can talk a little bit about that going forward. We have silver still staying strong, up about $28. And that's the silver's futures contract. Uh, and then, of course, we have copper still lower than 430, as we were yesterday, um, but trading at uh, $4.28 the contract. That's awesome. Again, you're kind of seeing this uh, with the metals this morning and really everything this morning, kind of uh, some big sell-offs uh, at the open, kind of trying to recover, but we're not seeing it. We'll have to wait to see what goes on at the end of the day. Of course, Tom will be on right after this. Crude oil, we're at 85.21, so somewhat down today. Uh, However, there is some discussion that Mexico may be reducing the amount of oil they're putting out, right? And I believe they're involved with OPEC+. Plus. Um, so that's going to also, of course, um, drive some higher prices in the oil market, the gas market. People in California are paying uh, above $5 a gallon, and so we're entering territories uh, that are a little bit more expensive, of course, off from that kind of $97 mark we were seeing uh, late last year. Tesla up 1.7% today, 175.97. Uh, Steel Dynamics off about 1.5%, uh, trading at 145.61. See what's going on with this. Put it on the yearly. Still, again, this is what I was kind of discussing yesterday. You know, you have a big leg up here uh, with high volume and then just kind of ascending on lower volume. But this stock tends to do that, right? And a lot of times when you see it kind of retrace back, you say, well, that's kind of setting up for lower prices. Uh, but we haven't seen it do that, and it's made that kind of movement uh, multiple times in the recent past, and we've never really seen a pullback uh, in steel dynamics. The dollar DXY trading at 104.15, QQQs at 440.10, Google 157.57. Uh, we'll talk about them as well. They have some uh, interesting stuff coming out in the realm of AI. Uh, Meta at 512.68. Wow, look at that. Really quite a jump on pretty significant volume as well. Disney at 118. Uh, they're actually able to suspend the ongoing lawsuit they have with the Florida government as well as part of some of the uh, business deals that they're doing, um, or at least how they're trying to transition. Uh, I'm not sure when that picks up again, uh, but we can discuss that a little bit going forward. And then Apple, of course, up 0.12%. Let's take a look today at BlackBerry. Some big moves up 5.73% to never to expect from this company here. But let's take a look at why that's happening. And it's they're developing a partnership with AMD. And this is for robotic systems. 
So the shares jumped uh, today after the Canadian company teamed up with Advanced Micro Devices to roll out a platform that will enable better robotics capabilities for the industrial and healthcare industries. The collaboration announced at the Embedded World Conference at Nuremberg, Germany, will use BlackBerry's ONX platform, a company which now generates revenue from its cybersecurity offerings, which is interesting, and licensing software to a range of sectors, has struggled to grow in the recent years. NY listed stock is down 13% year to date, compared to a 9% rise in the benchmark of the SP 500. Regardless, it's, it's interesting to see it move out. I know this was a meme stock a few years back as well, something to do with their satellites, um, but if they can get into obviously, you know, medical robotics, um, this is a huge thing. I was speaking with a friend of mine. Uh, he works for Rockwell Automation uh, in this, well, I, whatever. He works for them. And what, one of the things that they're getting into now is something called uh, RAAS, right, which stands for Robotics as a Service. And the idea is that um, certain companies, I'm not saying Rockwell does this, but certain companies in this sector uh, essentially are buying pretty advanced robotics, right? And so we see, we've all seen the videos online of like Boston Dynamics, and they have the spot robot, which are being used in um, military and law enforcement applications. Uh, they look like little dogs running around. And uh, they also have more humanoid robots as well. And these things are actually extremely impressive. And so the idea is you get these larger companies, everything, everything today is, is as a service, right? And this is part of this kind of hyper-specialization theory, right? Like, why myself as a company do I need to buy a bunch of robots when I can just kind of rent them out for uh, some long period of time? And uh, they're, they're being utilized, these robots, in uh, manufacturing settings. And, it, you know, that seems like some hyper sci-fi stuff. But, I mean, you look at some of the stuff. Let me see if I can actually pull it up. Like, give me one second. Okay. Uh, all right, so this is like the spot robot, right? We've all familiar with that. You've probably seen them on <laughs> Facebook or whatever. But you can, these things are, you can adapt a lot of things to them. Okay, so this has some kind of vision that I can see with. Uh, they'll use these in military applications. Um, and then they have ones with arms as well. And these arms articulate. Uh, the AI in these things is really impressive. It can see what's going on. It can make correct decisions. A uh, pair of things, you, there is a, there was a big one uh, with ChatGPT Robotics, and they were asking the thing, they, they put a bunch of items in front of it, right, that were somewhat related to each other. Uh, so, you know, you had some fruit, like a pear, or maybe a ball, and an orange, and then you had forks, and uh, maybe a spatula, so on and so forth, right? So you were getting things that were kind of obviously the same shape, and some that were within the same category, right? You had fruits, but the ball is the same shape as, say, like an orange, and it was able to pick these things out, and that seems you know, kind of rudimentary, but that's how learning begins, you know? And so the idea that we're gonna have these, you know, kind of real life like robot applications in industry soon and really manufacturing is, is really amazing. Obviously these, this is for like law enforcement applications, um, but you can see kind of the articulating arm here. Uh, pretty interesting to say the least. Uh, so anyways, it seems like BlackBerry is getting into that as well. Um, obviously that's just for an operating platform, but regardless, uh, very interesting. We can take a look at Lucid quickly as well. Give me one second. Okay, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Uh, this is up 3.2% today. That is Lucid. The deliveries uh, were not great, but exceeded expectations. So, hey, what do you want? We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The Gold Report. 
as a precious metal gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is the morning market kickoff in the afternoon with Jacob Sheep filling in for Tommy O'Brien. You know, guys, the, uh, the eclipse was yesterday. It was really cool. I don't know if you guys got to see it. Uh, I was able to actually go down there um, out on the street, and some guy actually had the glasses. I had never seen it before. Here are some of the pictures that they had on the uh, on some of the websites. Well, hey, wait a minute. What is that? Do you guys see that? Larry Live Trading Fridays. Give me a second here. Let me go to TFNN.com real quick. Oh, no kidding. Check this out. Front page, guys. Right here. Larry Live Trading Fridays. This is insane. This is starting this Friday, guys. Okay. All right. So this is every second and fourth Friday of the month. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. All right. You come in there. It's going to be in the den. We have your own room. We're going to get all set up. Get you set up. You don't have to do anything. All right. You're going to come in there and you're going to stick around with Larry. He's going to look at uh, potential trade opportunities and you just sit back and kind of follow along with it. And it, uh, it's, it's going to be super interesting. I can't wait. We already got signups and I'm really looking forward to it. And I believe we're actually with uh, Larry Pesavento right now. Larry, how are you doing? Hey, Jacob. I'm doing just fine. Thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. Looking forward to it. I like trading live. I've always... Uh, uh, trying to do that occasionally, but now we're going to do it sort of a regular basis. People have been asking for it. The main game is to make some money, do a yep. little teaching along the way, but it's very basically to show, show that uh, pattern recognition does work. It doesn't work all the time, but that's what we're that's what we're going to try to show the folks, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. There'll be some free gifts along the way, but uh, we're going to have a great deal of fun. You're doing a good job as a radio announcer, buddy. Don't yeah, give it up. <laughs> thank you, Larry. Like trying to learn Johnny here. Carson. That's you're trying to learn a little bit, right? Well, yeah, and, and Larry, I want to talk about this forceful. too, because you know, for anyone who's attended the webinars before, like one of your webinars, um, you know, you do a lot of this in the beginning, right? You have the portions, you let them run the entire time, and you have some kind of other education. So this is really going to be that in almost like a condensed way. You know, um, if you've never attended one of Larry's webinars, they're phenomenal, right? You can always buy them. We always have them archived. But this is one of the things, you know, you kind of tend to do in the beginning, Larry. And uh, at least for me, you know, I, I sit there and, and moderate the, the chat rooms for the webinars and everything. Uh, but, it, but it's always super uh, engaging, I would say, you know. You know, what we kind of do is you sit there, you run through everything, you call it out. And then we kind of, um, you know, we keep track of it within the den and, and people follow along. It, it's a great time every time, I would say. 
That's right. They throw vegetables, rotten vegetables, if they're bad trades, and they f throw fresh fruit if it's a uh, good trade. So that's pretty much how it works. That's right. And so we have it <laughs> this this Friday. Um, that's going to be from 9 a.m. to noon. I think this is going to be fantastic. I'm really it looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to is it. Is there anything, in, if you could say, is there anything in particular you're looking at right now sector-wise? You kind of tend to look more with just the ratios, right? Uh, yeah, ratios and patterns. I really don't care. You know, I, I watch, uh, you know, intraday, you know, three or four days. That gives me the patterns that I need to look at. Longer term, of course, I, I think we're in some type of a topping mode here in gold, somewhere between 2300 and 4300 But I don't know how much higher it's going to go from where we are, but it certainly could. I'm also a real critical level here in crude oil. We're going to have Mike Moore as our guest tomorrow. Uh, because we've got crude oil, gasoline, and heating oil with really mixed signals, which should be interesting to watch. And then, of course, we got the grain markets. Uh, we're having some sell-off in the grains, which mm -hmm. is what we want to see. And uh, those are the those are the things that make for uh, you know good trading, at least good trading opportunities. They don't always work, as we, as we say, but uh, they do work okay when they do work. Fantastic. Well, Larry, we're really looking forward to seeing you. That's going to be this yep. Friday, April 12th, and we'll see you tomorrow for your show. Thanks you very much. You're doing a great job. You're a little mini Johnny Carson, Thank huh, you. buddy? Good <laughs> Thank job. you, Larry. Talk to you soon, all, all right? right? Thank you, folks. Thank you very much, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. So that's right, folks. Just go over to the homepage of TFNN.com. You can see it just right up there. When you're signing up for this, you go ahead and hit subscribe. If you already have an account, you give this a second to load. If you already have an account, you click this here. Okay, already have an account, log in. Regardless, you pop in right here at the promo code area. Larry Live, right there. That gives you 50 bucks off. Now, this is for the first month only, and that stays with you for the entire time uh, that you're a subscriber to the service. All right, moving forward. I don't know. That, that, <laughs> regard. I was looking at the transition, that picture. Um, you know, this is where the real editing comes in, guys, you know? Regardless, let's move forward. We we're talking about Lucid uh, before we went to the break. Um, so regardless, they, okay, we've been talking about how the EV industry is, is kind of facing some problems, right? Just demand is lower. We're talking about how Ford is kind of pulling back a little bit from it and kind of changing their approach and everything. Uh, well, Lucid's first quarter deliveries were above market expectations. Um, and what does that mean, right? Well, I believe the kind of expectations for Lucid in general were low, right? I mean, this is a stock that's trading at, you know, $2.72. Of course, you had about a 3% pop today. The estimates for deliveries were about 1745 and they handed over 1967. Okay, that's that's good, but on the long term, is Lucid competitive? I I still think we've we've seen for a long time that they're they're not right now, right? So Lucid in February had cut prices for its flagship air sedans by 1% to 10% to support demand uh, at a time when consumers are rethinking EV purchases and turning to more affordable hybrid alternatives due to higher interest rates. Rivian Automotive, of course, beat expectations as well, but the overall demand is still an issue. Uh, let's look at this here. I see. And so this is something to really look at. So they made 17, 1,728 vehicles in the quarter ending March 31st, below the estimates of 2,123 uh, and compared with 2,039 in the preceding three months. So we are seeing a contraction in the market. Of course, I think Lucid has its own unique uh, brand problems uh, that, that aren't uh, entirely indicative of the EV market as a whole, but we are seeing from companies like Tesla and Ford kind of trying to restructure, especially when you're trying to compete uh, with, with Chinese companies, um, which I, I think personally was one of the big you know, reasons for, for what Yellen was saying, right? So this like overproductive capacity that China has, uh, how they're not going to allow China to flood, uh, you know, markets, um, especially nascent markets um, with their goods uh, in America. It remains to be seen. I think today as well, um, China had hosted one of the finance ministers of Russia and they were referring to, quote unquote, foreign interference in business, which a lot of people uh, were taking as, to, you know, a, a, as a suggestion of what Yellen was saying. So we'll have to wait to see. Of course, they have a big uh, kind of event occurring in San Francisco uh, later this year uh, about, about EVs and, and China's place in that market. We can take a look as well at Moderna. Now, this is super interesting. Well, I'm already looking at it. We're up 6.29% today. Uh, and this is actually from a cancer vaccine. Uh, that it will be unique from person to person. This is crazy from head and neck cancer. 
So let's take a look. Moderna shares rose 8% uh, today after a company's individualized cancer vaccine uh, developed with Merck showed positive responses in early stage trial in patients with a type of head and neck cancer. The vaccine is designed to train the immune system of the patients to recognize and attack specific mutations in cancer cells. Uh, this was showed in a treatment with melanoma in a mid-stage study as well. And this, and folks, this is really like, I think what the future is gonna be, right? You can almost even see like an evolution of like war, right? Like you have this big scorched earth policy, which, you know, the way I look at it is like what chemo would be in cancer. And then you slowly get to these more uh, surgical kind of like task force ideas in something like this, right? Which is like an individualized mRNA vaccine for cancer that will teach the body to attack these cells and not allow them to reproduce is, uh, is unreal. I mean, that's pretty life-changing. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right, that means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the Live Trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time speaking about this stock, but we just take a look at Tilray today because it's just such a massive move. Uh, I, I shared my opinions of what I think of these weed brands, you know, cannabis companies. Of course, Tilray also has some exposure uh, in alcohol, um, but you know, we're down 20 point, yeah, 20 point two percent today. Um, very, yeah, I was about to say, what a weird lag in that in that chart. 
it, this is on extensive volume to uh they're they're talking that they're they're seeing some strength at least uh, in in alcohol so that's their total revenue is about 54 million in that um that's up from 20.6 million on a year over year basis uh still they're they're just missing a lot you know q3 revenue was terrible for them anyways let's move on from that if i can get this pulled up here i want to talk a little bit about costco and what they're doing and how they're really benefiting from this gold market rally which is you know pretty historic at this point uh 2367 right now we're trading in the gold contract and wells fargo is looking that they're estimating at least that they're selling about 20 or excuse me 200 million in gold bars monthly which is insane so sales to brisk the wells fargo expect revenue may now be running at 100 to 200 million a month a rapid acceleration since bouillon hit the warehouse club late in the summer of 2023 which i think is so cool that costco does this it just seems like a cool place i don't know our work suggests there's been significant interest and cost aggressive pricing and high level of customer trust the accelerating frequency of Reddit posts, quick online sellouts of products and costs, robust monthly e-com sales suggests a sharp uptick in momentum since loss. This would represent quite a move for a product that only debuted in August, generated 100 million sales in Costco. So we'll have to you know, wait to kind of see what's going on with that. Uh, Costco is selling one ounce bars made of nearly pure 24 karat gold. While the price is not disclosed online to non-members, it is estimated that the product generally sells for about 2% above spot price, which as of Tuesday morning was around 2,357. That'd be more than just 2,400. Uh, maybe I need to do a little bit of on the ground journalism, get a Costco membership and go see how much the gold bars are since they're just kind of assuming that, which is really strange. Uh, look a little bit at GM. Now I was discussing how GM was kind of halting the robo taxi service. Uh, they had like an accident uh, that was kind of determined not to be their fault. Uh, regardless, they halted it a little bit. I'm trying to wait for my charts to load, but we can just talk about this a little bit. Uh, now, this is Cruz. Uh, the company is starting to uh, begin testing as early as Tuesday. Some of the people familiar with the matter. Cruz has no timeline for deployment. We're in the process of meeting with officials and select markets to gather information. And uh, I, I think this will be neat to see. And it's really cool seeing, you know, obviously this could be in Phoenix as well. Uh, but they have some stuff in Houston, Austin, and Dallas as well, where it's kind of shaping up that... Funny enough, uh, Texas is becoming a huge kind of manufacturing tech hub, you know, especially with Tesla and everything like that. Right now, uh, GM, we had a little bit of a leg down on light volume. Uh, we're trading at 44.61 in the meantime. Let us talk about Intel a little bit. Give me one second to pull up what's going on. They're releasing, uh, well, they're going to start competing uh, essentially with all these other chip manufacturers, which is pretty wild for them and a huge win I think that Intel needs as well all right so trading at 3817 right now and you know we want to see some more of these tech companies at least at home you know blow up a little bit right all the love is coming from TSMC and all these kind of fabs outside of the thing uh, so essentially they've released something called Gaudi 3 Okay, this is a new, completely new chip, which is amazing. Um, let's talk about this a little bit. This is at Intel Vision 2024. Intel introduced the Intel Gaudi 3 Accelerator to bring performance, openness, choice of enterprise, generative AI, and unveiled a suite of new scalable systems, which is going to be super important in AI, right? You don't just want to buy a simple thing that kind of, you know, obviously can't, can't scale up. Uh, Next-gen products and strategic collaborations. This is pretty massive. Um, so, so the Gaudi 3 AI Accelerator will power AI systems with up to tens of thousands of accelerators connected through the common standard Ethernet. Interesting. Intel Gaudi 3 is about, well, saying it's about to be four times, uh, it's going to have four times the computing power, essentially, from its past one with increased bandwidth, which is massive. Um, in comparison with NVIDIA's H100, which is kind of like this top-of-the-line training AI uh, processor, uh, Intel Gaudi 3 is projected to deliver 50% faster time to run 
on average across Llama 2 models with 7B and 13B parameters and GPT-3 17B parameter model. Now, essentially, that's just uh, pretty stellar. NVIDIA H100 is one of the cutting edges uh, when you're talking about training AI. The accelerator allows uh, for a shorter amount of time to train the AI and get it to do what you want. Um, and in my opinion, I think this is pretty neat to see them go uh, forward with it. And, you know, as more information comes out on this, uh, you know, they're just kind of announcing this, but as more information comes out, of course, uh, you know, we'll follow that a little bit as well. Let's take a look at Google right now, trading up 0.9%, trading at 15, or excuse me, 157 and 53 cents, and trying to get my notes to load up on it. Uh, they're developing their own ARM CPU AI chips uh, for their cloud server storage. Uh, again, this is huge. And it's interesting to see, you know, I was just talking about, uh, you know, how we have this hyper-specialization model, but it also seems too like these large tech companies that have, you know, a, a bunch of capital are understanding really where this is going, right? And, and getting to the point where they're designing, maybe not fabricating, but they're designing their own chips, which is really neat. So Google is making its own uh, custom ARM-based CPU to support its AI work in data centers and introducing a more powerful version of its tensor processing unit. Uh, Google's new ARM-based CPU, which is going to be called Axion, will be used to support Google's AI workload before it ro rolls out to business customers of Google Cloud uh, later this year. And this, see, that's what we were speaking about as well the other day, is when you get these kind of more business end AIs, which, you know, with Google's barred the idea of that. I, I know they changed the name, but I can't remember what they changed it to now. But the idea was that it was going to be this personalized assistant that learned about you and learned what you were doing and made decisions kind of based on that, right? And so we were also saying that you're going to have a lot of this be on the cloud, right? All the storage of this AI, how it's going to learn uh, past the point of shipment uh, is all going to be stored in the cloud, which is why I was arguing that Microsoft is poised really well because Azure is so built out and, uh, you know, they have such good deals with GPT-3, uh, with OpenAI. Amazon's interesting. Um, it'd be interesting to see where that goes. They might just end up being a, you know, cloud repository for um, how you would say, like just kind of more random, unique AIs that that companies that don't have their own storage. Uh, regardless, the Axion chips are already powering YouTube ads, the Google Earth Engine, and other Google services, which is pretty intense. Google says customers will be able to use the Axion CPU and cloud services like uh, Google Compute Engine, Google Kubernetes Engine, which is great. Dataproc, Dataflow, CloudBatch, and more, uh, which is pretty cool to see. So I'm waiting to see uh, kind of more of that when it gets rolled out. Google currently is at 157.51, trading up 80, uh, excuse me, 0.86%. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right, that means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the live trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. 
with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome everyone, yawning like it is the morning market kickoff. Uh, let's look at Boeing right now, <laughs> this company man is uh so down 2.37 percent today i'm actually i'm surprised we're not down like more right but you know of course you have this kind of name stay uh but i think there is a case almost to say that it, it could be a little bit lower so first things first obviously air plug blew off we all knew about this we all know about it we've heard about it uh the, one of the covering components for the turbines on the side of the engines uh completely blew off yesterday which, you know, definitely got its round <laughs> on the internet. Um, obviously not good for it. And then today, it's, uh, here we go. I just want to, this is what we're talking about. I'm not going to play the, the video. If you didn't see it, this is what happened. Uh, this component uh, completely ripped off, which is nuts. Uh, and then furthermore, what's going on is that their quarterly airplane deliveries, say no thanks, quarterly airplane deliveries dropped to 83 um, amid this whole thing, right? And this article is just talking about the door plug, but it has a ton of other issues. There's all the reports coming out saying that there's, you know, loose fastening everywhere. Um, it just seems like they're rushing kind of production on this. Uh, let's take a look. So the deliveries dropped in the first quarter, the lowest number since mid 2021, which is crazy because that's like hot time, you know, uh, pandemic era stuff. Uh, Mid-2021, as the company faced increased scrutiny after a door plug blew from its 737 MAX 9, the company handed over 83 planes in three months, ending in March 31st. Most of them 737s compared with 157 in the prior quarter and 130 planes in the year earlier period. Excuse me, yes, year earlier period. Wait, fun way to say that. So in March, Boeing delivered only 29 planes. Airbus said that it delivered 142 in the first three months of the year, 63 of them in March. Boeing customers are still ordering new jets from the manufacturer, which along with Airbus dominates the large jetliner market. The company logged orders for 111 for new planes last month when stripping out two cancellations, 85 of them, 737. Okay, still, I, I think that if more information comes out, right, like the government's not going to like really come in and, and audit everything that they're doing, um, that there's still going to be issues. I mean, the question is, is like if this is happening all at once, which is weird, right? But it's happening all at once. It's not going to stop because it seems like batches over a period of time were being incorrectly built. You know, um, and it's only a matter of time before something like seriously goes wrong, I would say. I mean, obviously, the air, the door blowing off is, is seriously wrong. But, you know, I'm talking like critical failure and stuff, um, which I'm surprised we haven't seen uh, recently. I, I know a few years ago that that had happened with some Boeings, um, but but still it says here as well. Um, CEO David Calhoun last month announced that he will step down uh, by year's end. Boeing also replaced its board chair and head of its commercial airplane unit, uh, which I think is the only way that it's going to kind of try to save face uh, going forward. 
All right, so you look at crude oil and kind of what the future of this looks like. Uh, trading at 85.25 right now. Of course, the high that we had on the yearly was 95.03, so still about 10 bucks under that right now. But uh, Mexico's state energy company, Pemex, is planning to cut at least 330,000 barrels per day of crude exports in May. Uh, obviously, that's going to be rough for Asia, United States, and Europe. The plan falls withdrawal of 436,000, uh, excuse me, 436,000 barrels per day of Maya Isthmus and Olmeca crudes this month, ordered by Pemex uh, to its trading arm PMI uh, Comercio International. Uh, this is all in an attempt to make its domestic refineries and its targets energy self-sufficient. You know, we're going through a period right now. So okay, let's just look at this here quickly, though. Pemex exported 1.03 million barrels per day of crude last year and 945,000 January and February. So from that 1 million, you know, that's roughly, you know, a 33% uh, decrease that they're going to see, uh, which is pretty intense, I would say. Uh, and then you also have the U.S. being kind of serious about this and, and what it could mean, you know, especially at a time where we're trying to keep general CPI uh, lower. And it, this is so interesting, right? Because what I'm going to talk about right now is with the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. But, you know, earlier on, the U.S. has been putting, um, you know, kind of barriers of trade against, against Russian oil, right? And they were talking about potentially sanctioning countries that were buying Russian oil. So now Ukraine is targeting Russian refineries, right? And this is all just, you know, I guess part of war or whatever. Uh, but they're targeting Russian refineries, and the U.S. is now having to urge, this has happened two times now, um, where the U.S. has had to urge Ukraine uh, to halt the strikes on Russian oil refineries in the event that it disrupts global oil uh, markets, which is pretty intense, uh, especially considering that, again, the U.S. was trying to stop Russia from getting its oil elsewhere. And really, in reality, what I could see it doing is that it, it was putting these sanctions on Russia, and so it would force Russia to sell their oil at a really great discount, Right and kind of make them lose out money, and uh, that's just kind of part of the game, I guess, right? Uh, the repeated warnings from Washington were delivered uh, to senior officials. Both intelligence units have steadily expanded their own drone programs, which was happening this. Uh, Russia remains one of the world's most important energy exporters, despite Western sanctions. Oil prices have risen about 15% this year to 85 a barrel, pushing up fuel costs, uh, just as everyone's trying to decrease fuel costs as well. But it's interesting to see the U.S. kind of be like, hey, man, like, I know we're putting sanctions on it, uh, but I think the government still knows that, that oil is getting out here somewhere and at a discounted price. Uh, so you know, it remains to kind of be seen what goes on with that. If this war continues to escalate, um, you could have kind of major issues going forward. Obviously, there are already extremely major issues, um, and oil is the least of those worries. But regardless, um, it's just uh, it's kind of an interesting part to learn about, right? It's things people don't always think about with it. All right, let's talk a little bit about some crypto stuff here. Uh, you have the halving this year on 420. Okay, so that will be in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's hovering around 70,000. Uh, Deutsche Bank came out with a poll that they had given their clients. And surprisingly, 38% of them saw Bitcoin closing at $28,000 this year, which is an insane pullback, okay? My, and we, we do see this sometimes, right? We've seen it historically where you have a having go on or it gets a lot of interest and then you get a massive sell-off because people uh, are just trying to take profits. But I would argue that times are a little bit different right now, okay? You have now institutional acceptance of Bitcoin to an extent uh, with these lever excuse me, with these ETFs. Uh, there's more discussion going forward about derivatives of those ETFs and derivatives of movement of just the, the, the baseline asset or, or currency in the case of Bitcoin uh, in general. And so, you know, there's some serious movement around this. I think you have a lot of fighting right now for liquidity, uh, especially with these large institutional investors, and more and more people are becoming familiar and warming up to Bitcoin, uh, essentially because it stayed here this long, right? And it, it was definitely an underdog for a long time. People are like, this is gonna end, this is gonna crash. And of course, that kind of argument uh, was easily made, especially when you were seeing all these kind of altcoins uh, getting totally rug pulled and, and people losing a bunch of money. But we haven't really seen that uh, with Bitcoin. And so I, I'm not sure where, where most of, or you know, I say most, but like 40% of Deutsche Bank's clients were getting that from. Uh, but it, regardless, it's, it's kind of interesting. We talk a little bit about Ethereum as well. Uh, Ethereum, which is really the main competitor 
uh, to Bitcoin as well, at, at, at least in the, the cultural sphere. Uh, the Ethereum's revenue skyrockets to 1.2 billion in Q1 of 2024, which is 155% year over year growth. Uh, pretty insane. We can talk a little bit about that when we get back. Stay right there. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. All right, welcome back, folks. We were talking a little bit before the break. Uh, Ethereum's revenue skyrocketed $1.2 billion. Uh, to that point in Q1 2024, uh, which is pretty nuts. Let's take a look here. During Q1, Ethereum's network registered over 107 million transactions and witnessed the creation of nearly 9.7 million new addresses, which is awesome. Obviously, that indicates um, increase in user engagement, which is phenomenal for any business. Uh, total value locked, surging by over 1.8 times compared to the previous quarter, along with the generation of more than 4.8 million NFTs. Uh, pretty nuts. And there's some indication that I, and I actually tend to think this as well, uh, that Ethereum is really going to outperform Bitcoin. It might not be soon, it might be a few years, uh, but I think it's poised uh, you know, to do that kind of more than anything else. We can take a look at how blockchains 
can be used just in day to day life. Uh, we're talking about how China is going to try to employ a blockchain uh, for its international business, which is pretty cool. This right here, however, is also interesting. And this could be used for anything, you know, obviously this is China, so you take that what you will. But I mean, I could see something like this. If everyone argues about things with, you know, voting or, or whatever, blockchain can be kind of a cure for that, right? So the China is going to verify citizens' identities with new blockchain-based platform. Super interesting. Blockchain technology will be used to verify the real name identities of China's 1.4 billion people, according to an announcement from the blockchain-based service network, uh, China's national-level blockchain initiative. Uh, the real DID service launch will enable users to register and log into websites anonymously using DID addresses and private keys, ensuring that business data and tra transactions remain disconnected from personal information, uh, which is super cool, especially when you're doing something like kind of tallying or voting or something like that. Uh, state media says enhanced credibility to enable public supervision. Regardless, the point I'm trying to say with this is it's not just about these, these coins, right? You can have blockchains that don't have anything to do with coins. You can do it business, politics, whatever you want. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be on with you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, we have Tom O'Brien coming up next. Have a great rest of your day. The stock market is a delicate